Live from the NJ.com studio comes the only weekly TV podcast you'll need, where a lofty critic squares off with an obsessed superfan on everything from highbrow drama to lowbrow reality. The cocktail shaker is ready. Prepare for your TV hangover. Now, your hosts, Vicki Hyman and Aaron Medley. Hello and welcome to TV Hangover, episode 33. Uh, I'm here, Aaron Medley, with Vicki Hyman and special guest, Bobby Olivier. Hello. Hey, Bobby. Um, we're so happy to have you join us. Uh, Bobby watches almost as much television as Vicki and I do, so... Right? I'm, duh, I watch a lot of similar things. He I don't, also, he, he I don't also, watch enough of He it. also sort of crosses the veil between serious TV and reality TV. I really do. Right. Yes. Well, you're the only snob in this room, Vicky. I'm not really a snob. <laughs> kind of. Uh, <laughs> don't forget to follow us on Twitter at TV Hangover Show, at E underscore Meds, at Vicky High, V I C K I H Y, and at Bobby Olivier. Uh, we also have an email address, TV Hangover Show at NJAdvancedMedia.com. We haven't heard from you guys in a while. Send us an email. Um, okay, so you guys know that I've been binge watching. The Walking Dead. After so many yeah, episodes well, of you saying I will never watch it, and yeah, it's welcome to 2016. <laughs> okay, <laughs> whatever, guys. I'm slow on the on the uptake here. On but something. you're fast going through it. I am. I'm on season four, episode two. I'm going into. She's watching it right now. I, <laughs> <laughs> while working, <laughs> I would if I didn't need to pay attention. So they're still at the prison. They're still at the prison. Now it's like a utopia. They have the horses and the pigs and their garden, and you know, uh, Carol's cooking up some. Dear, <laughs> I mean, oh, oh, Aaron. <laughs> so, I, so I, I, so I guess something's going to happen. You guys, no, that's the way it stays for the rest. It, it's just a that's utopia. how the show is. That's it's it. Yeah, a wonderful place. <laughs> well, I was telling you guys that my favorite thing about The Walking Dead is that when we get to the point where I want to murder someone myself, the show does it for me. It's really great that way. Mm-hmm. It is. So the end of season three, Andrea done. Loved it. Spoiler she, alert. Oh, my bad. <laughs> for the other for the other errands out there who are like a week behind. All four of you. <laughs> Two people who haven't watched. Um, I loved it. I mean, she is the queen of, she was the queen of poor decision making. Um, also, Lori. Lori was annoying. But she, she made a lot of bad decisions too. Well, but fine. Yeah, I was ready for Lori to. Yeah, I was ready to, for Lori to, to bite the dust mm-hmm. as well, um, but I'm still watching, still liking it. I am not looking forward to the day when I have no more episodes. Well, to then watch. there's Fear the Walking Dead. Yeah, which is actually pretty good. It is. We're both really enjoying it this yeah. season. This season. What about this the first season. season? The first season, the first two episodes were really slow moving, and I just feel that in the first season. There wasn't enough of the fall of civilization, which is what it was supposed to be about, which I thought would be really interesting. And now mm-hmm. it's like, you know, it's yeah. a zombie thing on a boat yeah. in the it's second uh, season. But it's, th- it's hitting the sweet spot right now, I think. Yeah. Are there zombies on the boat? There are no zombies on the boat, they're, but there are zombies around the boat. in the water, oh, I guess. Oh, really? And they have to make land. And they do make land, you know, a mm-hmm. couple of times at least in the first four episodes. Because yeah. this was one of my questions because I said the way I would survive the zombie apocalypse island. is to go to an island. Go to an right? island. Thank you. I've yes. been saying that for years. So apparently that's that's not going to work because there are zombies in the water. Well, there are zombies. It's not like um, if you're going to look at the classic um, Max Brooks World War Z where the zombies like live in the water and walk out onto the surf. It's not mm-hmm. like that yet. We don't exactly know long-term survival in the water. But um, they can wade, they can sort of float. I guess they've got those juices, uh, gases inside that yeah. they can float. I don't know. There's not a lot in the yeah. water yet, but yeah. there are some. They're pretty buoyant. Okay. Yeah. All right. Yeah. Well, I will continue watching, and then maybe I will switch over mm-hmm. to Fear of the Walking Dead. You will. Uh, <laughs> all right. Fine. Let's get into some news. Do we have news music this week, producer Alyssa? Oh, she's sleeping news on the job mu- over music? there. Music? Yeah. We're just waiting for it. Oh, there it is. <laughs> Okay, so <laughs> our people's, the court people's court news music. I love it. All right, so from Deadline, uh, the Mindy Project has been picked up for a fifth season. Did you know that was still on? I did no. know that was. I did know that was still on, and it had quite a shocking finale of the second season. That's right? when it was on Fox, yeah. right? No, 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 no. Oh. Was it third season. Uh, don't look at me. I don't know. We, I don't no, know. There's no one cares. Many, there's apparently. too many episodes. Well, it was picked up by Hulu. Uh, and it was the season four also aired on Hulu. So okay, now, it was the end of season four. Yes, I cannot keep up. 
So now the fifth season will air exclusively on Hulu. Great. Sounds good. Exclusively means no one else wants it. No one else wants it. You know what else Hulu announced that they picked up, guys? MASH. A show, an election special from Triumph the Insult Comic Dog. (laughs) But why? Why is he still around? That was like a thing when I was in college. I'm going to be asking this later on when we discuss a different show, but go on. Okay. All right. Well, in other news, uh, there is that big hullabaloo. I don't know if you've heard of it uh, with Kelly Ripa and Michael Strahan. Just a what? little story. What are you talking about? I know. No one talked about that last week. Um, well, we now know who the first guest co-host will be once Michael Strahan exits the show next Friday. And this would this be a possible replacement for Michael Strahan? No. Okay. Impossible, possible replacement. Okay. It's Jimmy Kimmel. Oh. No one's excited about this. No. No. We get enough of him at night. Yeah, I agree. I, I do think that they should test out people or at least have people co-host who we don't normally see. Mm-hmm. I mean, realistically, I think Anderson Cooper will get this job eventually. I don't know he why. He has all the jobs. I, he does have a lot yeah. of jobs. I don't know why he wants the job. Well, why wouldn't he want the job? You have to wake up early. That's the first thing for me. He you probably ass- gets I know, up early. You already. assume he doesn't he, wake up early. He sleeps like max three and a half hours. You think? Yeah. I actually heard an interview with Kelly Ripa where she said she doesn't arrive to the studio until eight a.m. It's still wait. It's still after. It's still before I wake up in the morning. But okay. Wait, you wake up after eight? Yes. Uh, that's ridiculous. Well, I'm so on she, the way she has here. To get there before at eight, then, she. Uh, so she gets there at eight. She gets there at eight, like before like hair and makeup. Yes. Everything. So then she she lives in New York. So I mean, she could right. probably get up at like like seven thirty six. Seven thirty. Yeah. yeah. Agreed. She probably doesn't yeah, live that far not, away from the yeah, studio. Yeah, that's not bad. I it get sounds up like a good then. gig to Give me. me the gig. You get to work at eight. You go on at nine. You leave at ten. Yeah. It sounds like a really nice job, actually. I can make that happen if Kelly wants to co-host with me. Um, In some other big, major talk show news. Major. Major. Amber Rose, a.k.a. uh, Wiz Khalifa's baby's mama, or uh, Kanye Kanye West's ex-girlfriend, or neo-feminist. Really? Well, that's what someone called her. Uh, she is getting a talk show at VH1. It's a weekly show. Uh, and in this article from, again, Deadline, they call her an entrepreneur. What she, I guess she is. Well, I mean, I think anybody who has some sort of deal with whatever product she is shilling can be called an entrepreneur. That is true. The show is being produced by Dr. Phil and his son, Jay McGraw. And there's stage, stage 29 production. Is, is she going to be giving advice about relationships? Well, she's going to interview her celebrity friends about pop culture, motherhood, relationships, friendships, race, and entrepreneurship. You know what it sounds like? Cocktails with Chloe. Yeah. Which was canceled. Yes, thank you. So okay. what, what lasts longer, that or the new Harry Connick Jr. talk show? Ooh, I love Harry Connick Jr. I, lo- I, I like him as well, but as a talk show host. Maybe not so I much. I think he's going to be a little... I, I, I don't see anything him bringing to the table that isn't already out there. Harry Connick Jr.'s best role to date was in Independence Day. Yep. Which I've never seen. Excuse me. I've never seen Independence Day. Well, guys, it's been fun. (laughs) I'll see you later. (laughs) We gotta go now. What? I I just never saw it. It just did not interest me at all. I never saw it. It's a really good movie. (laughs) Is it a really good movie? I've I've seen it a solid 50 times. Agreed. What? Are you kidding me? It's on TV. All the time. Right now. And I never watch it. Probably. Yeah. Yeah. You should. You know, it's I like, like the Shawshank Redemption <laughs> or the what? Green Mile. Those are always on. No, they're yeah. always on TV. Yeah. You know, I, I the like Green Mile a good disaster takeovers. movie, but I yeah. like, I guess I like my disasters more slow moving. I'm really like whenever. It um, is slow moving. N- well, I mean, like they, they blow things up really quickly. I like it when the tidal wave, like that John Cusack 2012, 10, 12, yeah. that movie on um, the day after tomorrow, every single time I the day after like tomorrow, the day tomorrow is tomorrow. on, I watch it. I love that I movie. I think yeah. you are totally mischaracterizing Independence yeah. Day. Yeah, I've never seen it if so it, yes i probably am if you like the day after tomorrow <laughs> independence day is for you it's really okay. yeah, the, the tone of it is very similar yes yeah it's a family story well i think i probably have to watch at the it end for of the, the day for yeah. the sequel comes out because yes. i'm sure my son is going to want to watch that of course i mean i can't i'm in shock right now let's mm. let's let's move on to something that we know we all watched and that would be this uh, week's episode of Game of Thrones. Oh, I didn't watch that. Don't tell me what happened. <laughs> Spoiler alert. Yeah. If you have not watched this week's Game of Thrones, 
Uh, Jon Snow's not dead. No kidding. <laughs> I'm sorry. I was like, it, I mean, I love the fact that he's not dead, but it was like, come on, of course he's not dead. Yeah. I, I, of course he's not dead. I don't dead. even watch the show. I'm, I'm not <laughs> caught up. And I, right. and and I knew that, that he Jon wasn't, and dead. I knew that he wasn't dead. I read this interview on, or this piece on uh, Entertainment Weekly t- this morning where they're like, we've been keeping the secret. And Kit Harrington had to tell the cast that, you know, he really had to sell it that Jon Snow was dead and that he was leaving the show. And this has been going on since 2014, summer of 2014. And even Kit Harrington says after a while, he was like, okay, people just called. Yeah. Uh, oops, no. My bad. <laughs> yeah, <I'm sorry>. <laughs> <laughs> well, you're quoting him, so it's okay. <laughs> oh, my gosh. No, actually, he used the F word, which I will not yeah. say. But um, he was like, the cast just didn't believe him after a while. Can I, can I ask you a question? Yeah. Because we had this issue when Glenn supposedly died on... Oh, sorry. No, yeah. I knew that okay. already. <laughs> I know yeah. almost <laughs> every major plot line from Okay, yeah. so Glenn Walking didn't Dead. die. Okay, Correct. but they did all these things outside the show to make you think that. And then they got, like, really angry at people paying attention to stuff outside the show. Right. And it's like, I think it would have just been better if they said, we're not telling you what's going on and just left it at that without saying, he's dead, he's dead, he's right. dead. Mm-hmm. I just think they shouldn't, they just should have like let us think for the ourselves. The oversell and not is dead. what yeah, sort so of, really, yeah. it, I, th- I think it's really obnoxious and I think it, it hurts the, I think it hurts the art. Yeah, and I, th- I think we've gotten to a point with these shows, especially like the crazy cult followings of Game of Thrones and Walking Dead where if you don't see the arrow go through the person's skull, right. they're probably not dead. Except we if did see the knives go into John's yeah. now. But if there's like any ambiguity at all, not dead. I don't believe it. I, Especially I, if it's a main character. I agree with you completely. And I learned that from walk, watching The Walking Dead. Yeah. It's mm-hmm. like if you don't see that person die, they're not dead. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um. So, Bobby, I know you have, you're still catching up on Game of Thrones. What mm-hmm. season are you on? Oh, I'm somewhere in season three. Okay. So, but I'm aware of all the major plot lines. Okay. <laughs> well, Jon Snow may not be dead, but there are a bunch of other people who <laughs> yeah. were murdered. I feel bad in this about episode. this because, you know, maybe there's one you hadn't heard of because all the Jon Snow just overtook the conversation. But mm-hmm. yeah, there are a couple Too people. bad. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, that's what happens when you're on TV Hangover. We spoil things. Um, so one of the major uh, deaths in la- this week's episode was that of Ru- Roose, Roose Bolton, Bolton by his at the hands of his son. It's a son. That's true. <laughs> <laughs> Bobby has to come back, and they were week. on a boat. <laughs> uh, no one got that one. The, the boat, Michael Bolton from SNL. When no. they're on the, the Lonely Island? Sorry, no. Guys. Really? Oh, uh, yeah, no, I, I do Thank know what you're you. talking about. It took, it yeah, took, yeah, took I a, know, I know. It took a second, but yeah, <laughs> oh, I, yeah, did, yeah, I yeah. do. All right. Okay, yeah. moving on. So, yeah, so Roose Bolton died at the hands of his bastard son, Ramsey. Ramsey. Ramsey Snow slash Bolton. Right, Snow, because that's the name all bastards have. Yes, but he was he was um, legitimized by his father. Correct. But, however, Roose had to sort of taunt him throughout that his wife, Walda, is um, pregnant, and if it's a boy, oh, well, right. it's always good to have a son around, a uh, real son, in case my illegitimate legitimate bastard son disappoints me he says you know twirling his mustache and and (laughs) ramsey has uh this grand idea to kill the lord commander little does he know Mm -hmm. uh and the and roos is like no that doesn't make sense everyone will be out for for blood if we kill the lord commander and this is what happened after if you acquire a reputation as a mad dog you'll be treated as a mad dog Taken out back and slaughtered for pig feed. My lords, Lady Walder has given birth. A boy, red-cheeked and healthy. My congratulations, Lord Bolton. Congratulations, father. I look forward to meeting my new brother. You'll always be my firstborn. Thank you for saying that. It means a great deal to me. Oh my god! I jump in my seat every time! Oh my goodness. (laughs) 
I mean, talk about ruthless. I mean, the funny thing was is that I was watching that scene and um, as Roos Bolton is talking, and I was like, wow, I, I don't know whether to be more scared for Roos Bolton or Roos Bolton's son. And then, well, wow. <laughs> they answered the both. question very quickly. Actually. You know, it's like I, I know that I should hate Roos Bolton because um, he he um, uh, sold out the, the, the Starks and the mm-hmm. Red Wedding and all that. Did you get to the Red Wedding? I know what happened. Oh, okay. okay. All right. But, I mean, the thing is, like, he's so I much more sane Internet. than his son, so I can't help rooting for Russo for Ramsey. Ra- I mean, <laughs> th- there's no way anyone can root for Ramsey. If you root for Ramsey, you need to seek uh, professional. He, he has to die, and I can't just tell you, he has to die in a really horrible, terrible, torturous way. Because right. I always, I always felt cheated by the way. Oh uh, wait! Oh my God! How many people have died? Do you know? <laughs> I don't know. I don't know what. By the I way, know. certain other horrible. <laughs> People on the show have yes. died that have just not had enough. I think we're thinking of the same. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Agreed. And like that that death was not enough for me. It there needed to be like more horrible. But stuff it was happening. also it was a pleasure. To it watch. was a pleasure also because it was you know I mean I read the books but it was still like I'm sure it was still surprising to some people. Right. It was surprising um, to me because I didn't read the book. Yeah. And Bobby, but, it will be a surprise to Bobby. Yeah. It, it needs I to be. Assume. It needs to be a, a really awful, horrible, drawn out death. For yeah. Ramsey, Ramsey is ter- a terrible uh, human being. Yeah. Uh, and then we had some other deaths. People People that I did not recall. Uh, uh, Greyjoy. Oh, I know oh, who that is. Oh, Balan Greyjoy. Yes. Patrick Malahide. No, the guy I didn't know was the one who pushed him. Euron. Sure. Yeah. His <laughs> Sounds good. Brother. Oh, that was who that was? That's his brother, yeah. His long-lost pirate brother. Oh. Uh, yeah. I wish um. I had a long-lost pirate brother. <laughs> no, you don't because <laughs> That's all I can you'd be lying in the bottom of a fortress and pipe. <laughs> yeah. Dead. Wait, um, did someone else die? Oh, well. Well, no, not really. The Lannister unnamed i'm gonna un- not name the lannister who died oh. last week yes All um right. uh the uh, the most interesting thing like once you get beyond Jon snow is um the opening i think it was the opening scene where bran is using his green sight with the um tree god person? with the tree god person i think is the green seer i think <laughs> sure. his name is um, i was getting confused between him and, and and the blood raven i'm like is that the blood raven or the green seer it's like vicky what is wrong with you wait who's the blood raven <laughs> i don't I- Somebody know. else. These are all great <laughs> softball names. Can we actually start a softball team? Yes. Blood, the blood Somebody raven. Somebody else. So Bran, is, Bran has a vision of um, Winterfell like 25, 30 years ago. A young Ned. More than, yes. no? Uh, 40 years ago. Whatever. Yeah. Um, where, um, no, actually, I don't think, no. Actually, I could tell you it was probably like 30, 30. years ago. Yeah. Anyway, um, where you see Ned fighting with Benjen, like sparring in, in the courtyard, and Lyanna Stark rides in. We finally People, see Lyanna. Lyanna Stark, who has been referenced many times throughout the show, but throughout the throughout the books, the show, and um, it was very exciting to see her. She's younger than. Okay, does everybody know is who Lyanna Stark is? Yes, she is. She's. I mean, this point. Then who? Well, I mean, at this. Well, then when she dies, everybody knows that Lyanna Stark dies um, after she was either kidnapped by or ran off with Rhaegar Targaryen. Lyanna Stark was Ned's sister. She was Robert Baratheon's betrothed and when Rhaegar took her away or she ran off with him, Robert basically started the war that put everything into motion. So now we're seeing Lyanna. Of course, there is a long-standing um, uh, theory. theory that Jon Snow is Lyanna and Rhaegar's son. Right. Which means that we're going to see whether that's true, which brings us back to the whole point that Jon Snow cannot possibly be dead because why would we care about Lyanna otherwise? True. So when they set up Lyanna at the beginning of the show, I'm we like, okay, Jon, know, there's no way that Jon Snow is dead. We all know that the way that this whole shebang yeah. ends is that Jon Snow and Daenerys will rule the kingdom. Well, there's a third theory. What's there's another theory theory that um the sigil the symbol of the um of the targaryens was a three-headed dragon and it would be Tyrion. it would be Tyrion. oh my god time out let me tell you i don't know where you were yesterday but okay. in this very office <laughs> in this very office i stood out there for a good 20 30 minutes talking to other game of thrones thrones fans about this theory and they all poo-pooed me and said i was a crazy person and i had no idea what i was talking about and i tried to explain the whole thing because we know that Jon snow's mother died during childbirth Mm -hmm. and daenerys's mother died during childbirth and Tyrion's mother died during childbirth and the targaryens and those who will rule the three-headed dragon are born from blood (laughs) 
And those are the three people. And they all looked at me like I was a mad woman. You know, I don't know how much stock to put in it. I like the idea, and I think it would work very well because they all have their individual strengths. But I'm also kind of taken by the whole John and Mira being twins, that they were both born to Liana, and um, Mira was taken off by Howlin' Reed like John was taken off by by Ned Stark. And so maybe she would be the third one. Is Mira a snow? Um, no, she was taken in as a regular oh. child of Halloween, but we don't really know. In the book, she's the same age as Dawn Snow. They have the same hair. I find the hair very telling. <laughs> <laughs> I do. The I do. They both have these boring. beautiful black curls. All right. Very telling. So I, I kind of like that one. I like Mira, and I wish she had more to do. I, All she did was like kind of pout outside yeah, the cave this week. Yes, that's what she did this week. Well, of course, we will be uh, keeping tabs on Game of Thrones every week here on the TV Hangover Show. So if you have any questions or any theories of your own, uh, don't forget to email us or tweet us. Now, Vicky, last week I gave you, I, I basically threw down the challenge of all challenges. And that was for you to watch Keeping Up with no, the Kardashians. No, actually, the, the challenge was for me to stay conscious during <laughs> my very first episode of Keeping Up with the Kardashians, which I have never first ever seen. Ever. ever. 12 seasons in. 12 seasons, and Vicky has never seen a full episode of Keeping Up with the it Kardashians. It was a point of pride, actually. Well, guess what? <laughs> Times have well, changed. Well, you know, the thing is, like, I covered celebrity news for so long, it didn't feel like I needed to watch it, because I knew what was going on in the show. I mean, I knew what was going on, and, like, the in show. In real life. In real life, and the show just deals with what happens in their real life this two months true. later. Yes. So, like, why, why, why do I have to watch it? Can I just tell you mm-hmm. that that was really one of the longest hours I had <laughs> ever spent in my entire life, and it's not like I was sitting there, like, oh, my God, this this is so boring. I can't deal with it. It was just, it just, you know, it, it wasn't like that. I was like minorly entertained, but I would like click on my thing to see how far I'm in. And I'm like, oh my God, I'm only 12 minutes in. That's how I felt when I watched the pilot of vinyl. So we're on the same page. Uh, it's, yes, it's exactly the same thing. But it's like, it just, it felt like it was like three hours long. No. Only an hour, multiple storylines. Bobby, I know that your girlfriend watches. Uh, yeah, she she's an intermittent Kardashianer. So you've seen a few episodes. Yeah, I, I've seen my fair share over the years. And? because Well, because my girlfriend, but before that, like, it's been on for <laughs> however long. Yeah, a while. My, and my mom would watch it. Really? Yeah, mm-hmm. like she's watched it. Like, E... All the E! reality stuff was big in uh, in my family home. <laughs> all right. Well, I can't say that I've watched many other E! reality shows. Some of them, but 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 not all of them. And Vicky, you asked me yesterday why, why, just why? why I watch. Just why? Just why? <laughs> well, I don't have a great reason for yeah, you. Yeah, I don't have a great reason either. Yeah. It's one of those shows where, like, you just watch it. Yeah, I don't know if I watch it as much as I just, like, look at it. Like... <laughs> You could like be looking at paint dry. Yeah. Well, like, it's a little more entertaining than that. Look, all right. You, can, can I can I can I can I, can I compare it to Real Housewives of New Jersey, which is the only reality show I ever watched? Sure. It's like you know that it's like super fake going in, and there is so much like over the topness and ridiculousness, and you see the producer manipulation that it's like you can watch it, and like you're almost like watching. A scripted show. I disagree. Whereas Keeping Up with the Kardashians, it felt like, you know, it wasn't like entertaining or crazy enough to be to, to, to be entertaining, basically. It was just kind of boring. So here's the thing with, oh, I see what you're saying. Okay, so Keeping Up with the, the Kardashians is a show that you sort of like, you, you, how they do don't I explain have, I mean, they're, they're it? It's not a show where you can come in. You can't come in season 12 and and you're like, oh, I really love the Kardashians. You kind of need the history and then you just build it's a lot like, like this. Game of Thrones. Yes. <laughs> yeah. Well, you, I think you, you mentioned yesterday that you like, were growing up with them. Yeah. Well, I didn't grow up with them. I mean, the show didn't you start until I was out of college. Well, but no, I, no, no. But I like watched you them. them grow up. Yes, correct. Like the Kendall and Kylie before Kylie had this new face and she was just a. <laughs> Does she? Did oh, oh my surgery? God. I don't know if she had plastic surgery, but there's a lot you can do with makeup, apparently. Wow. Her face looks completely different than it did my like gr- three My girlfriend years ago. has her makeup. Oh, does she? Yeah. And all, like, all of like mid tw- mid 20 year olds want the makeup because it's like really super high quality or something. Right. Yeah, no. Like she looks like her makeup. Yeah, like the, and, different like, the lip person. stuff. I don't the know. The lip plump. Because she, her lips are very, her top lip is very thin naturally, mm-hmm. but as you can see on the show, it's not thin anymore. But anyway, we'll 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 do some before and after pictures later. But I think w- when the Kardashians first came on, 
it was just about this family who sort of had a famous last name because of Robert Kardashian. And the show was just them at home in their shenanigans. Just a normal family. And Bruce Jenner is the stepdad. They live in a very modest, I would say, house. Um, and it was just comparatively, a, comparatively <laughs> to where they live now. Um, and it was just a show about a family. But then the Card- uh, Kim Kardashian sex tape came out, which was like part of the show. Like they showed that. Um, not the sex tape. Not the sex <laughs> tape, but the, the controversy surrounding it. And then th- they show her posing for Playboy, which is another thing that she did that sort of made her more famous. And you just start to see the change where they're becoming famous for like absolutely no reason. And then the show took a turn and you it's where you are now where you see like – Courtney going on the Ellen show or, you know, Chloe going to promote her book. That's not how it started. So you sort of began this journey with them as normal people, air quotes. Um, and but now, now you that see they're them as not famous normal people. anymore, why do you want to keep watching them? Because you don't, do you? No, you do, because there are themes that continue. So the whole, um, you were asking me about Scott Disick. Yes, I was, I was totally befuddled by Scott Disick. Scott's been there from the beginning. Mm-hmm. And he's dated and Courtney I, for And I know he has, years. like, alcohol problems. He has many drug problems. problems. He was a partier. His parents both died within, like, six months of one another. They, he went into rehab. He, that, yes, that um, sort of sent him on the di- from him. And so in the episode I was watching, he was like... He, like, first of all, we're supposed to feel bad for him, and at least he acknowledges it that, like, he felt lonely in his new, big, huge, enormous house. Um, yes. And he's like, wow. yes, I know this is, you know, ridiculous. But he grew up rich. He grew up wealthy. His parents had a house in Hamptons. He's not poor. He's from New York. So but go ahead. He, they're at Williams Sonoma, and, you know, he's shopping for stuff for his kitchen, which, I, of course, I did not buy at all, because that's what you hire people to do. Right. And, like, he was disappointed that Courtney didn't seem more impressed that he was picking out his own tea kettle. And I was like, why, why am I watching because, this? Because that shows him, Do you see, you need the backstory there. When I look at Scott, I actually see a really sad person, and I'm kind of disappointed that he's back on the show because he wasn't really on um, that much uh, at the end of last season. I see in his face that he looks like he needs help, and it just makes me sad because agreed right (laughs) it's like it's not he to me is no longer entertaining there was a point where scott was like the most entertaining person on the show he was funny and ridiculous and like he said things that you were that you or i would think watching the show he actually said them aloud um and he was just crazy but i he his eyes are dead he is just yes i agree it's sad um so that is one of my least favorite storylines at this point so there there was a little drama on the episode with caitlin jenner um we're going back to caitlin's interview with vanity fair where she kind of put down chris jenner she did okay i i I don't remember she said basically that chris jenner knew she was transgender and she treated her poorly and chris jenner contends that she had no idea that she was transgender Mm -hmm. Um, well, Chloe does an interview with Howard Stern, I think. Was, Chloe does an interview where basically yes. she, she, she... Allegedly, because al- we didn't hear okay. the interview. So Chloe does some sort of interview where she puts down um, uh, Caitlyn Jenner, and then right. Caitlyn Jenner calls up um, Chris, right. and, you know, they're having an argument. And uh, right. But this is where, again, you need the it, backstory. No, 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 no. I, I, I get what's going on. My, my question is, it's yeah. like... When I'm watching it, it's like, it seemed real. And I'm like, are no, they good actors? No. Or, I mean, like, but you know that that whole conversation had to be set up by producers where, he, you know, he has to call her. Correct. Or, you know, she has to call her. her. Yes. No, no, no. That is true. And I do think that's the case. But we've heard a lot of reality people say, like, yes, they put us in the situation. But the things that we talk about are actually real issues. And I thought that conversation where you could tell they were shooting it with, like, a handheld camera. It wasn't the same as, like, the normal glossy setup. Um, that maybe this was something where, the, yes, they staged a phone call, but I thought the conversation mm-hmm. was real. And what you have to understand as far as the backstory, and I can't believe I'm getting into the, keeping up the Kardashians this way, but Chloe and Bruce were extremely close. Mm-hmm. That they were, it was like he was her father, even though she loved her father, Robert K- Kardashian, but they were extremely close. He had been her father figure since she was five. Mm-hmm. And then when she transitioned and became Caitlyn, uh, Caitlyn Jenner, their relationship was troubled from the start because of the Vanity Fair article, and they never really got back on the same footing. So it is kind of like, it's sad to see that they're at this place where Chloe's like, F you, and, he's, and Caitlyn's like, you know, F you, and I don't care, and you kind of well, have I, to... I, I found that part 
fairly interesting. I also found another part which seemed genuine to me, but then I'm like, is it really genuine? Yeah. Where um, they're all complaining about Rob Kardashian and Black China. Yes. And I loved it when Chris said to them, oh, it's like, have, I've put up with... Oh, we sorry, have the clip. Oh, please just do the clip. Let's so listen I, to so the clip. So I don't clip. have to do my reenactment. Yeah, if you don't do your Chris Kardashian impersonation. You should not be paying for your son that is almost 30 years old to buy a house. Drop him. Cut the cord. You guys can judge me all day long. I came here to have a nice dinner, so just everybody relax. You you all have to have somebody to blame and criticize instead of saying, what's the problem? The problem, problem is the you. Problem. No, you. Yes, it is. No, all of you can f- off and go think of something else to talk about. I've seen you guys through so much sh- that you do that I have to f- put up with. I'm married for 72 days. Really, that was normal. I mean, the shit we've all gone through. You guys can do anything you want, and it's okay, and all I'm supposed to accept it all. And I'm going to do the same thing for him. So stop judging me. That's legit. That was absolutely legit. That actually resonated with me a little bit, and that, I think, addressed my whole issue with um, the Kardashians, the, the death of shame. Mm-hmm. Basically, real, t- today's reality television, we're talking about the death of shame. Nobody is embarrassed about anything they do oh, anymore no. because they can make money off it. Correct. Because they can sell it, and I hate that so much. Yeah. And I love, but it's, it's just as funny that those words are coming out of Kris Jenner, who's like the mastermind of all this, yes. and she's throwing it back at her kids. Yeah. But I loved it. I, that was the only part that I really loved, and I'm like, why why can't we have like a nice, like thick half hour of that rather than like an hour of all okay. this other Okay, well, crap? I know Bobby <laughs> wants to say something, but I, I completely agree with you. When Keeping Up the Kardashians first came out, it was only half an hour and it was, I think it was much better. The hour is, is completely unnecessary. Uh, agreed. And through all of this, I think I've realized why I will actually watch it. And I, and I don't, and believe me, I, I've, I've only seen, you know, a handful of episodes, but I think I enjoy watching really rich people have problems and get sad and, and cry but then they have I think they do genuinely sort of care about each other as right. like a family and then it's sort of like the full house moment at the end when they're like hugging or at least they like text each other and say <laughs> right. You're, it's okay um, and that there is some sort of like re- resolution to a, to, a, to a lot of it and there's like there's more of an arc than maybe I would have expected yeah. See, I, I do like arcs, and and just bring back Real Housewives of New Jersey. You have the Carolyn Manzo spinoff, Manzo with Children, mm-hmm. which is like, I think it is only half an hour long, and it's like, why does anybody watch this? It's just like these people acting silly, and that's what I don't like. I like to see some actual, you know, emotions like that. I that are sort of real, legitimate, you emotions. know, some some growth, some, you know, whatever. And it's like I just don't understand like the rest of Keeping Up with the Kardashians, where mm-hmm. you're just like watching them like go shopping or go on the Kelly, what go on the Ellen show. It's like I don't care, right. I don't care, like, why, like, why does anybody want to see that? You don't care because you don't know the backstory. I don't, even I knew the backstory. Why nope. would I care about she's Disagree. scared to go on the Ellen show? Yeah, but it's why Ugh. is she scared? Because of the whole Scott thing, and she's been in hiding, yada, yada, yada. Anyway, we do have one more clip, uh, oh, no. and this is, this is an oldie but a goodie, and I feel like you'd get a kick out of this one. Baby, give me a hug real quick. No, no, I don't know. Baby. Jump in. <laughs> <laughs> Wait. Oh, I'm going to have such a headache. Wait. My earring's gone. Are you s***? Oh, my God. I'm going to cry. My God, I'm going to That's Kim. Hold on. Seriously. It's not funny. Are you so serious? Literally, that's $75,000. Hold on. We'll find it, baby. We're not going to find it in the ocean. Chris, he's so playful. He throws me in the water. I land on the side of my head, and I feel my earring is gone. I'm pretty upset. <laughs> so I just want to run away because Chris has never seen me cry before and I'm kind of embarrassed. Oh, what happened? My diamond earrings fell out. I had my diamond earrings and one of them came out. Oh my God. All right, so take this one out. Show me where. Just show In the where. ocean. I'm not going to find it. So a- dramatic. But the ocean, that- it's not that deep right there, honey. It's the insurance is going to take there. care of it. That's why we have insurance, honey. Okay, show me where. Reason. I'm just so annoyed. Don't move. Now just breathe. Everything's gonna be fine. What's wrong with you guys? My diamond earring came off in the ocean and it's gone. Okay. Kim, there's people that are dying. I just told you. Anyone that would it's be fine. annoyed. I work really I know, hard and I, I know you bought do, honey, these, and, and that's why you bought insurance. insurance. Ever bought. I don't want to seem like a spoiled brat for crying over an earring, but I just purchased these earrings and I don't know if they're insured yet. 
Okay, for the record, they found the earring. And this was not brought to us by Farmers Insurance? It was not. Yeah, um, yeah little Kendall and Kylie dove in. It was like a fun thing for them to do to try right. to find the earring. Then they're this like, oh, is, we found it. This is before they were models. But yeah. yes, they, they dove in. And I like that moment because to me, as, as many episodes of Keeping Up with the Kardashians that I've watched, I will never, ever understand why people are fans of Kim Kardashian. If anything, watching this show, you should not be a fan. She is one of the worst human beings is she, on is reality she the worst? television. I mean, she just seems like very oblivious and just not very deep at all. That is Didn't, correct. She doesn't. She's about as like shallow much of a as the ocean. In that one I mean, she's gorgeous, but it's like, why would you want to spend time with her? You wouldn't. I mean, like Chloe, I can sort of see. Chloe's awesome. Yeah, I mean, even even Courtney's even okay. Courtney, but it's like, yeah, there just there's no there there. There's no there. She was, was at the Met Gala on Monday night, and they were asking her about her gown. And she's like, I just wanted to be like sort of a sexy, blinged out robot. And I'm like, that's what you are every day. Yes, that's what you are. Yes. Brainless. Yeah. I'm sorry. I hate to sound so negative on Kim Kardashian, but again, I've watched all 12 seasons um, or 11, and then this season, and I just don't understand people's mm-hmm. obsessions with her. I just don't understand it at all. She, every time she has a chance to redeem herself, yeah. she di- she digs a hole. Sorry. All right. Well, Vicky, I'm glad that you watched. I don't have to keep watching. You right? don't have to keep okay. watching. You'll never watch again. It's fine. I will watch for the both of us. Um, so coming up soon, sadly for me, this weekend on Sunday is the series finale of The Good Wife. Yes. Aw. You know, it's it's one of these shows um, that my husband watches. Yeah. I don't actually watch it except, like, when I have nothing else to watch. And so he gets to take over television for, like, the two hours a week he gets to take over the TV. Mm-hmm. So I go in and out of the show, and I annoy him so much. I was like, who's that? And why is he like that? <laughs> you know I'm that person. The Good Wife is kind of like Game of Thrones in that way, where someone will come back from, like, season three, and you're like... Wait, I know I should know this person. I have no idea who that is. You know what? It always comes down to, I always ask the same question, which is like, what is the fake Google company? Chum, oh, Chum, Chum Hum? Hum. I'm always like, why did they name it Chum Hum? That's the stupidest name ever. So Sorry. it's Google. <laughs> okay, granted. Uh, Chum Hum. Chum Hum. Well, I'm sad to see it go. The Good Wife has always been one of my favorite shows um, since it's been on. in season, what are we in? Season seven now. Um, season five was one of the best seasons of television Ever. Is that the one where Will died? That's the one. Spoiler alert. Oh, come on. <laughs> Will Gardner dies. The love of Alicia's life. Um, but I think what the show is doing now is coming full circle. Uh, and so the show started out with Peter Florick, who's Alicia's husband. He was uh, he was caught using state funds to pay for prostitutes. As one does. As one in does. New Jersey. <laughs> Anywhere, but they're in Chicago. And uh, Alicia stood by his side. She was a dutiful wife. And then once he went to prison, she had to get a job. And that's how she got back into law. Now where we are uh, toward the end of season seven, Peter again is caught up in uh, some sort of scandal where he's accused of tampering with evidence uh, as the What, what is his position attorney. now? He, he was the is state. Is he governor? He's governor now. Yeah, okay. But he was a state attorney general. Yeah, he was attorney general before. Now he's yeah, a governor. Correct. Which makes sense. Uh, he, he ran for president. Did he? He did. How did I miss that? I don't know. That was, I think that was the beginning of this season when Margot Martindale was on. Mm-hmm. Um, but anyway, so he's in that scandal and it's coming down to the point where it's looking like he is going to have to plead guilty or he's being, he's going to be found guilty. But in the meantime, Alicia has declared finally that she wants a divorce. And she Hold wants on. to be happy. She hasn't been divorced this entire oh, time? Oh, no. They've been putting on airs because it's always better when the politician is married and they have the cute Like kids the entire the... time she's been Absolutely. pretending to be? You're kidding me. No. I had no idea. Yes. Oh, my God. I'm sorry. Like, my mind is blown. Still because she's had, like, so many married. relationships since then. She, well, she had the relationship with Will. Now she's in the relationship. That's why they call it the good wife. <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> I'm serious, people. I had no idea. Mind they blown. Were pretending to, they were still pretending yes. to be married. That's a question I should have There's, asked my husband. They're married now. <laughs> and she's dating Jason, played by Jeffrey Dean Morgan. Hey. Um, or to put it in Bobby terms, Negan. And oh. Say. <laughs> or, uh, or, a, or Denny. Or Denny. <laughs> um, and they're dating, and they have a great relationship, and he is the investigator at her firm. And um, he sort of he sort of told her last week, I think it was, that I want to be with you, but I cannot guarantee that I want to be here, like in Chicago. He's sort of like a roaming. You know where he's spirit. from? 
the character. New Jersey. He's from New Jersey, yeah. Yes, where he, like, beat up a judge. Yeah, they they should come back to New Jersey. (laughs) They should. Those Uh, things are not frowned upon here. And so Alicia, whose kids are now, her daughter's going to, Grace is going to go to college. Her son is moving to Paris to marry his RA or something random. Um, And Alicia's like, you know what? I want to be with you, too. But being the good wife that she is, will she stick around for Peter, who may or may not go to jail? You know, I just, I really want to have a whole conversation about the, the, the crux of this show, which is that she's been pretending to be married. She's been pretending to be in a happy relationship with him all these years. Yes. I did not know Only that. Only in public was it happy. Behind the scenes, How they didn't live together. How could she date people? How could she date people if this was... They didn't live okay. together. And P- then... Poking holes. Well, right now holes. she's dating Jason. Well, the one guy that she dated, Finn, last season, they worked together so they could sleep together in the office once everyone left. So no one really knew. I know, I know. Well, we have a clip, and I think this, these two clips that we have here um, actually, for me, set up the show for the season or series finale. Uh, first, we're going to hear a conversation between Luca and Jason. So Jason's the one Alicia's dating. Luca is a young attorney that she's been working with. Peter's in trouble. I think he might go to prison. You don't sound that upset about it. He's your client. Hey, I'm trying my best. The facts just aren't cooperating. How's Alicia? A rock. But if he goes to prison, she'll need a lot of comforting. Here's what you don't understand about Alicia. If he goes to prison, she'll never divorce him. Ever. I disagree. Because you think things are logical. (laughs) She will visit him every week in prison. She will slowly drift away from me. And she will be the stoic spouse. And if he doesn't go to prison? She'll divorce him. And which do you want? Well, obviously we know which one Jason wants. But when he was saying that, I was like, there is no way that Alicia would stay with Peter if he went to prison. Like, why would she do that? This is now the second time in their marriage that she would make that decision. And here's the conversation that Alicia had with Peter shortly thereafter. Don't decide yet, Peter. The jury's retired. Just... Sleep on it. I'm going to take the deal. It's the smart thing to do. Two years. I get out, write a book, start over. You going to come visit me? I will. The hardest thing is being forgotten. I won't forget. I mean, really? I don't understand this show. <laughs> I thought I thought that it was a jumping off point this whole time. I'm just no. Vicky's mind is blown <laughs> right now. Why is Julianne Moore still with him? Julianne, Julianne sorry, Julie. Julianne, 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 I don't know. Is Julianne Moore still? With him? <laughs> why is Julianne? Why is her character still with? Like, why? I don't what is know. she getting at? What is she? Getting out of it. I don't think Peter has any redeeming qualities. I'm not really sure either. And a few weeks ago, when she made the declaration to him that she wanted a divorce, I was like cheering and screaming and tweeting. And I'm like, finally, it's been seven seasons already. You should have divorced this jerk in the first season. And now she's by his side again. I don't have they know. have they explored like what's going on like like her psychology for wanting to stay with him? No, because it doesn't make any sense. It doesn't to me. make any sense to me at all. And I hope that the series does not end with Alicia standing beside Peter. I can't. I better not. Well, I mean, they cheated for seven years, aren't they? Yeah, yeah, that's true. Yeah. So we'll see what happens on the series finale of The Good Wife. I will be watching. Hopefully, Vicky will watch. Actually, too. I may watch too with my husband. I'll let him watch. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Good. Um, and then finally, speaking of Sunday shows like The Good Good wife. Uh, on last Sunday's episode of Silicon Valley, uh, there was a pretty graphic horse sex scene. Words I never thought I'd say. Actually, Peter says it was horse rape. Really? Yeah, they're calling it. Um, oh, because the one horse was tied down. Yes. The mare? Is that the female horse? I don't know. I don't know. What do I know about horses? Did you see this, Bobby? No, but I'm aware of it. I'm aware of it. <laughs> yeah, I, I watched just that scene. I don't watch Silicon arranged Valley. rape is what Peter called it. Uh, well, mm. oh, well, okay. You know what? Peter does a lot of things, but anyway, um, I thought it was pretty, pretty graphic. I didn't need to see horses having sex, but 
I did. Mm-hmm. Happy Monday, Wednesday, <laughs> whatever day it is. <laughs> Sunday. Thank you. Um, so this led us to have a conversation about some other shocking moments in TV history. And Bobby, you have a couple. Uh, yeah, all of them come from American Horror Story. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I think for me, I mean, each season has had its own brand of shocking things. But the Asylum season, which was season two, which was based in like a 1960s mental asylum and uh the chloe savigny is that sevigny sevigny Mm -hmm. her character uh who's like giving the crazy mad scientist doctor um a hard time or something he ends up cutting off her legs and then does all these uh, experiments on her and then flash forward to her like crawling up a staircase at, at, into like a school play yard to terrify all these kids and she looks like, 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 a, like a soft shell crab or something oh. and it, it's uh, yeah it's pretty uh, pretty pretty brutal wasn't there a scene in the last season of American Horror Story the one with Lady Gaga where there I don't even know I, I can't like Lady Gaga's like Nether Regions ate somebody or something oh is that what ha- or there was the one you where you well, about this Bobby the, no the, <laughs> the one that I'm thinking of I don't remember that one but I, I didn't watch the whole season but uh, they she had a thing where her and her, I don't know, man friend, they go out to a club to, like, find somebody to have, like, a threesome with, bring the person back, and then they immediately, like, they, they start going at it, slit the girl's throat, and then, like, that's, like, when they really get into it. And then it's just, like, oh blood gosh. everywhere. Ugh. And, uh, and yeah, they, they, show, uh, they show quite a bit of, of everything. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I would say, for me, uh, one of the most shocking and gruesome moments uh, on television was the Red Wedding on Game of Thrones. Really? I thought, like, when they killed the pregnant lady? Oh. Yeah. It's it's okay, guys. (laughs) It's all right. And and HBO HBO and Game of Thrones, I think, are... It's just, like, a different level of gore. Yeah. Because it's HBO. That's true. Uh, Spoiler alert on that Game of Thrones (laughs) Red Wedding thing. No, she she gets stabbed in the belly. Yes. Yes. It's pretty awful. And I also had on my list, um, quickly, this season of Fargo, when they're driving with the body in the windshield, whoever that person was, because you don't only watch one episode. It was was Kieran Culkin, I think, right? Yes. Yeah. In the the premiere. Mm -hmm. I just thought that was a little much. Um, well, I have a lot. Um, very, very quickly, of course, The Walking Dead. There are so many gross things. You haven't gotten up to this, but there's one that involves a revolving door. And oh, Bobby, yeah. you will know exactly what I'm talking about. Mm-hmm. That goes on forever. Okay. It is awful. There's the body in the well. The uh, oh, I did. Yeah, yeah that was well. nasty. Uh-huh. And I have to give you, I mean, there was something about um, when Carl finds um, the zombie that ate Lori. Um, and the bo- and the zombie has this huge distended, distended belly. belly, which 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 led me to ask last week: mm. um, Do zombies defecate? Like, mm. how does I mean? Because you don't see a lot of fat zombies, so what's the deal with that? Okay, that was really gross. Okay, that's just The Walking Dead. Anything on Hannibal? I had to stop watching Hannibal after like the third or fourth episode when they created these horrific tableaus. And I know, um, um, uh, oh, um. The, the, um, it, it was sort of like the scene in the movie where he's in the prison cell and he kills one of the guys and then like sort of drapes him with like these wings and like the, he cut up the back of his skin and pulled the Ugh. skin out so that it was like an angel. Ugh. It was the most horrifying thing. Jack Lugo, you know what I'm talking about because I know you love Hannibal. Um, a lot of things on X Files, including Home, where you had the incest and the mother under the bed, horrible. But actually, oh, I'm sorry, and Penny Dreadful. Oh my God, I said oh quickly God. here, and this one Penny is going Dreadful, on Penny Dreadful in the first season, um, Victor Frankenstein creates a monster, and then he creates another monster because the first one didn't work out so well, and so the second monster works out much better. But then the first monster comes back and is apparently standing behind the second monster and rips him apart and sticks his head through the middle of it. <laughs> and at first, I'm like, is this like Alien where he's busting out of the first uh, out of the second? No, he was just standing behind him. It was gross. But the most disturbing thing I saw is True Blood. Okay. True Blood, when Bill Compton, in a flashback, no, I, maybe it's present time, I don't know, he's having sex with his maker, Lorena, and he's really angry at Lorena, and so while he's having sex with her, he turns her head entirely around, and she loves it. It's like the most <laughs> horrifying thing I think I had ever seen. It was so awful. That's funny. Well, here's what I'll say. I love that all of our shocking moments um, were bloody, gory, and disgusting, and it all started out with horses having sex like yes. they do in real life. 
<laughs> on not Silicon Valley. Sex life. You don't that. know that. They're not. They're not. They're not tied down. They breed horses. They're not tied you down. You don't know that. I think I would know that. I think that if you, <laughs> I think we would find out about that. You if don't that was think the practice. that the the creators or writers of Silicon Valley researched this before they did it <laughs> to make don't it more know. legit. I'm just saying. Anyway, uh, well, that's going to do it for this episode of TV Hangover. Bobby, thank you for joining us. Thank you for having me. Welcome anytime. Uh, we will be back next week to talk about the Good Wife series finale, Game of Thrones episode three. We'll see what happens to Jon Snow uh, if he is himself, and all the other good TV news and gossip. Uh, follow us on Twitter at TV Hangover Show at e underscore meds at Vicky High V I C K I H Y. That's right. And at Bobby Olivier, uh, we will be here next week.